Welcome everybody. In this video, we're going to use the Metropolis algorithm to generate a distribution of energy states in a system that's given by the Boltzmann distribution. Now the system that we're going to consider is called the isothermal atmosphere. Basically, it's an idealization of the real atmosphere, um, and the two simplifications are really that we're going to imagine only a single component, nitrogen gas, and that the atmosphere has a constant temperature throughout, so that it's isothermal. Now, the way we're going to simulate the motion of molecules in the atmosphere is we'll consider a single nitrogen molecule, and we will we'll make it jump upwards and downwards uh, through a random list displacement delta y, which is given by this expression. So let's start in the middle. Rand is a random number between 0 and 1. When we multiply that by 2, we get a random number between 0 and 2. When we subtract 1, we get a number between minus 1 and plus 1. And when we multiply by the step size s, we get a number between minus s and plus s. So our molecules are going to jump uh, a random distance between uh, plus s upwards and minus s downwards. Now in the isothermal atmosphere, gravity is pulling down on the molecules. So if we imagine a collection of them in two boxes, one and two, the ones at the bottom have lower energy by a factor uh, proportional to the height difference, right? mg delta y. So ones jumping this way by thermal diffusion have a harder time, whereas the ones at the top in box two can just fall down the slope. And this is codified in our simulation by um, a factor which is called a Boltzmann factor, and we're calling that Boltzmann factor epsilon, the Greek letter E. And if you have trouble with the Greek letters, there's another video in this sequence called The Greek Letters Go Green. So check that out if you have trouble with any of these letters, like psi. The Boltzmann factor is given by an exponential expression of this dimensionless energy delta psi. So delta psi is a dimensionless energy. The Boltzmann factor is e to the minus of that energy. And this energy is actually a ratio of two energies. mg delta y is the potential energy difference going up a distance delta y in the gravitational field, and kb times t is the Boltzmann's constant times temperature, which is a thermal energy. So we have a gravitational potential energy divided by a thermal energy. And it turns out that it's going to be useful for us to define a quantity mu, and we'll talk about what that is later on, but it's, it's just the inverse of the thing we were talking about before. It's the thermal energy divided by m times g without the y. The reason why that's useful is it allows us to define the dimensionless energy delta psi as delta y, the height difference, divided by mu. The Boltzmann factor is just e to the minus of the dimensionless energy. So, the Metropolis algorithm allows us to simulate molecules in this energy field. And the, the rules are actually pretty straightforward. Basically, if you pick a molecule up here and you want it and you, and you attempt to let it jump down, you always accept a downhill jump. But the uphill jumps, those are the ones that only a fraction of them have enough energy to get there, we're going to do that with probability epsilon. Now to do that randomly in this simulation, what we're going to do is compare another random number, rand, between 0 and 1, with the Boltzmann factor, which is the fraction of molecules that have enough energy to jump from box 1 to 2. And then we'll accept the uphill jump only if the random number we generated is less than or equal to the energy factor, the Boltzmann factor. OK, so let's start with our spreadsheet from the previous video where we talked about uh, probability densities and how to generate them from a histogram of frequencies. What I want to do here is I just want to um, trim off all the stuff that we don't need. So I'm going to delete the graph and I'm going to delete all the data from the quiz table and I'm going to uh, redo the headings of this table to match what we're going to use in the Metropolis algorithm. Okay, so now we've got all the headings for the Metropolis table, then what we want to do is insert some extra columns for a parameters column in the left-hand side. 
OK, so we've now got a parameters column with a whole bunch of things, and I'll talk about what they are um, as we go along. And I've also entered a blank column just to keep the parameters separate from our metropolis table. Um, I now want to just trim off some stuff in the histogram table as well. And we're going to need that one, which is the thing where we're counting. And we're going to need this guy. But after that, we don't need all of this. So let's delete all of that. So we'll delete that, and instead of doing scores, our histogram is going to have heights y. So if I hit Control C and then Control V, I can paste that in there. And our PDF is going to have to have y instead of s. So let's just get rid of s and put y. OK. So now what I want to do is talk about the Metropolis table and talk about the things that are going to be entered into it. So the column here, step, the first value is going to be 0 because in step 0 we're going to set up the simulation. And we don't need any of the things apart from an initial height. And I'm going to make the initial height be equal to the step size. So I'm just going to put equal and then the step size. And if I hit F4, I get the dollars for an absolute value. OK, so that's all I want in there. Our step, we're going to do equals the value above plus 1. And our delta y is going to be equal to that thing that we talked about. It's going to be equal to the step size, s, which is over here. I need f4 to make it an absolute value. And then multiply, and then open paren, 2 times rand the rand function rand, minus 1, and then close paren. So that gives us a random number between uh, minus s and plus s. Oh, but I typed it in the wrong place. It needs to be in the row for 1. So I'm going to take this, go Control c and then plonk it in here, Control v and delete that guy because we don't need it. OK, delta psi. So delta psi is just going to be equal to delta y divided by our function, our value mu, which is here in the parameters table. Let me hit F4 to make that an absolute address. And then let me just show you how I calculated mu. So mu down here is calculated using the formula that we talked about, kb times t divided by mg. OK, so that's that. Then we need to calculate our epsilon, which is just equal to the exponential function, and I need to type exp, minus uh, our dimensionless energy, close parens. So that gives us our fraction, which is a number between 0 and 1. And then what we need to do is calculate the trial value of the height. And the way to do this is that it's going to be equal to, and now we need to do a conditional. The conditional is if. And if I open up, it's if the random number between 0 and 1 is less than or equal to epsilon. If that's true, the thing after the comma is going to be entered. So it's going to be the value of y is going to be the old value plus delta y. Otherwise, the value that it's going to be entered into this cell is the one that I'm typing in now, which is just the old value. So let's hit Enter. Oh, and the mistake that I got was that some for some reason the I didn't show up. OK, so let's see. Let's click in here. So we have if the random number that we generate is less than or equal to epsilon, right, the blue thing, then I want the value in this cell for y trial to be the old value of y plus the delta y that we're considering. Then the last thing I want to do is actually calculate the value of y. And this is actually pretty straightforward. What we're going to do is put in here if i f the new value of y is less than 0, then I want to use the old value, right? Because we can't have a height that's less than ground height. So if, if we do happen to try to go into the ground, we're going to say, stay where we were. So that's what I'm typing in now. And then the other choice is that if it's not less than 0, then we have a valid height, and I want to use it. 
Okay, so now I've got this and what I want to do is I want to copy this and I think this time I'm going to do 10,000. So now I have 10,000 values of the height. Now what I want to do is I want to count them. And in our histogram we have stuff. Now it turns out that the bin that I want to use, well this should actually have units in it. So the bin is actually going to be height. So I'm going to put meters next to it to remind me that it's a height. And our bins are going to be 500 meters. So let's type in 500. And we're going to start at zero. And so that's good. And then the thing here, that's going to be the value that we started with. And then this is going to be the, the value plus the bin height that we just did. So that's good too. Here we're going to calculate the frequency. But one of the problems that I have here is that I'm starting at zero, which I don't want to do. So I want to make that number there bigger by one. So I'm going to hit delete and type four. And the 6002, I actually want it to be the number for the last row in our spreadsheet, which is row 10,003, which is this last one. So I'm going to change 6002 to 10,003. So 10. And the same here, I want this to be 10,003, 10, 000, 3, 10 000, 3, 10,003. And I want that to be H4 as well. So delete and 4. So there we go. So we're now counting how many times in this column, right? So let's have a look. This column that we're getting a number between 0 and 500. And then the next row after that, we're going to make it equal to the value above. And here we have our probability density function, which I need to correct because we're not got 6,000. We now have 10,000 values. So let's do that. And this thing, oh, that should be the same. So let's copy that up to replace that one, make it the same, and copy this one down to make it the same. OK, so we now have that. What I want to do now is to extend this. And remember, because this histogram table has steps in it, we need to copy two at a time. And I need to copy that down. And it turns out I probably want to get to about 50,000. So we now have a histogram table that's recorded all of the data that we generated with our Metropolis Monte Carlo method. So let's plot that. I need to highlight all the values of y and then hit control and all the values of the probability density and then I want to insert and a scatter chart and lines and there we go I want to change the chart type to our template and the one we have here is markers only so let's do that but I don't want markers what I actually want are lines so let's do that hit OK. So I now have a nice uh, line graph and actually this vertical line is a little bit distracting so I'm going to get rid of that and I can do that by moving the graph over and then just pulling down on these two it brings it down and gets rid of that so that's good. I'm going to fill in this chart with all the num all the names for the axes so the height of the nitrogen molecule in meters and we're using the letter Y so the probability density P of Y on the Y axis and note that this has units of 1 over meters so that when you multiply this by that you end up with something with no units. Then we want to tidy up the axes. So that's the X axis going out to 50,000 and we need a title Boltzmann distribution of the isothermal atmosphere and the last thing I want to do is to select data and put in a label for this and let's call this okay so when I click in a blank cell and hit delete we now have a live probability density function um, generated by our metropolis sampling method of the isothermal atmosphere let me add a table over here the distribution that we get from the simulation actually matches pretty nicely the prediction from the Boltzmann distribution which is an exponential um, decay. Let's just check to see what our plan was. Our plan was to use the Metropolis algorithm to generate the Boltzmann distribution which we just did and we showed that it worked. So after I finish this video I'll post it on 
the website for this project, circle4.com slash biophysics, and you should look for the videos link near the top of the page.